Uh, we have just come out of the Korea Thousand A uh, Spring Summer 20 show. We raced in there straight from a cold wall, just managed to catch the finale. Um, but it was quite nice actually. Normally we'd be sat down, but we were up in the rafters. Um, it was at the Wapping uh, Power Station, which I believe was a Charles Jeffrey destination not too long ago. And I'm going to show you the little uh, hydraulic power station, I beg your pardon. We've got uh, little tickets. I tried to scratch some of mine off, but I think it just said sitting, <laughs> um, which is really nice. So, um, Korea's work is always um, brilliantly imbued with political narrative. Um, she doesn't like talking much to press backstage after shows um, because she really wants um, the individual to decide how they feel about the clothes, how they wear the clothes, and she was she was saying at the end of the day, um, you wear it how you see it, and I will never change your opinion of anything regardless of narrative so it's best you see what you saw go away and come up with your own ideas <laughs> so here we are uh, um, so here we are coming up with our own ideas um, as you can see there's kind of top prizes um, on the invitation there's lots of images of um, um, kind of uh, civil moments that's not really a phrase but you know what I'm trying to say so there's the kind of couples old people churches trees environment so it's indicators of um, things that we're going through now. Um, last season, um, Perea was talking about how our phones are an extension of the body and how as a society we are um, essentially becoming um, big dum-dums who rely on our phones constantly and can't live without them. She had bags as invitations, someone was asking everyone to put their phones away. Um, and it was there was a really beautiful metaphorical presentation um, with everyone going into kind of a glass cage, waking up, going onto a conveyor belt. It's about the rat race and how we've all just become these um, completely routine, boring humans who rely so much on technology and we don't communicate with each other anymore. So this season um, was similarly similarly metaphorical in its presentation, um, beautiful um, arrangement of televisions, like really old fashioned televisions um, in the middle of the, what should I say, set. Um, and these were reflecting images from the audience onto the television. So a bit like, um, in American sports games where you go and see and um, people kiss on the camera or people propose or they have that traveling camera that spotlights people in the audience very much like that so um, kind of grainy um, grainy effect that we're zooming in on members of the press and buyers and all this kind of stuff which I think is really brilliant and also it's something that um, is quite is quite a fun trick to do in fashion um, often the designer is getting so scrutinized by what they're putting out there it's quite nice to have um, the mirror turned on the audience and um, everyone having to look around. Also, I love that the unease that everyone must have been feeling because um, being Brit most of us are British, <laughs> all of us um, get a little awkward and I love that the whole audience is like, please don't pick me, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. <laughs> and I think that's something that's really strong in Perea and her work is that she really likes pushing people to the edge or challenging people and really making them think. Um, and so um, lots, all the models came out in masks um, and those creepy masks kind of have a full face of makeup and a little bit clownish, a little bit of Viva Vendetta. Um, and that again also has huge political um, analogies to it. Um, she was saying that, well, she, she has said to me previously, if she wasn't saying anything backstage, that often her clothes are referential to what's happening right now. Um, and it seemed that she was commenting, um, this is totally me putting um, my opinion into the clothes, but it seemed like she was commenting on um, the political upset at the moment and how. Um, there's not really much we can do. Um, the colour palette of this collection was beautiful. So we have um, bright yellow, candy, not candy, that's not it, sunflowery daisy yellow, and a beautiful lilac. And also there were some really soft um, kind of dove greys as well, which is really new for Priya. Um, her wonderful traditional Iranian print was back, um, which is hand printed in the traditional um, traditional way, which I think is absolutely wonderful. I love that there's this useful element to her clothes, but there's always something that roots it back to the tradition of where she's from. I think that's really important and really special, particularly in the menswear scene. Um, track suits are back but with different piping around the legs um, suiting had been given a revitalization with offcuts from the entire collection so some of them had cut out 
on the back and the final looks I think were um, kind of clashed with off cuts which I thought was really lovely as well um, trainers as well there's continuation with um, Converse uh, there's Perea print on Converse which have been going for about three or four three seasons now um, they're so so ridiculously popular if you can get your hands on one good luck um, and this season as well they did the lilac this kind of shade of lilac in the Converse as well which now I expect will be difficult to get hold of um, but I just felt like the clothes the colour palette was really soft and gentle but I love that it clashed with um, kind of poking a camera into the press's faces these creepy clown masks um, eerie bobs with glitter hanging from them there was something weird and childlike and slightly broken about it but I thought that was really magical um, and then at the end for the finale um, yellow roses being handed out and that is as I will read from the press release the elusive yellow rose were discovered growing wild in the Middle East and a flower that symbolises freedom and Perea's only statement to press um, backstage was that all she wants is peace and freedom so um, I think that was really romantic actually and often that's not something you would say with a Perea show but I really liked the romance and I think that with the pastels but with sharp tailoring and pattern cutting was a really beautiful mix and I was actually really kind of thrown away by this collection really yeah not um, thrown away blown away <laughs> <laughs> um no I, I think it's amazing she, I, she started in such a craft craft aspect one in the um Iranian block prints that we spoke about that dominated her first collection yeah everyone saw and actually they dominated them so much that you couldn't really tell how craft and how worked on these silhouettes were yeah. and she starts to take that back and then start to use these jarring colours you can start to see actually how incredible she is as a pattern cutter not just a um, print designer well, print placer and all of you know she's got an incredible talent the um, way the coats that are slashed she refers to them as apple crust apple pie crust you yeah. know that kind of interlocking like diamond. interlacing yeah. when, you make, when you make pastry yeah that's really hard to do. <laughs> it's really, really hard to do, and not and it just takes time and energy and take getting it wrong to get it right. There's kind of no way you can. Do, there's no way you're ever going to do that right first time. Yeah. It's about hard work. It's about perseverance, and I think that was a really great example of Perea. Mm. You know, and that really summarizes it. And I was trying to explain her to someone the other day, and I was saying with her work, it's really hard. It's like when you hear a kind of a saying in a different language, you say, oh, what does that mean? They're like, well, there's no English translation, but it's still really beautiful to hear. Yeah. It's a bit like that, like, we don't understand all of her references. We haven't lived her life, but we can appreciate the amalgamation and the energy and the concepts behind them without having experienced it ourselves. And to be able to convey that at her age with three seasons behind her mm. is something that designers in Paris would kill for. Yeah. And it's a real skill. And ever since her first presentation that I went to on a whim on the last day of London Fashion Week Men's last January, I've been screaming and shouting about her because I think she's really incredibly talented as a storyteller and a craftsman. Yeah, and that balance is quite difficult to get right. I also would like to say that she's a master of an edit. Yes. <laughs> her collections are so well edited. And yeah. actually, we've been saying off camera that quite, that quite a few collections could do with three or five looks being chopped off. Yeah. And there's, there's never that with Perea. It's no. always really edited to perfection, um, really precise. And we, we should talk about the bags as well, because last season there was amazing plastic wrapped bags, which kind of harked of that um, NAF sofa coverings you get, or table coverings you get when you're at home with Gran or Nan. Um, but this time they were um, still crossbody, but much, much bigger. I got the impression that you could fold them out, but I just couldn't actually um, Look a bit mental backstage and uh, open the I couldn't the bags. assault the model quick enough to have a look. So, um, but they, they were that kind of thing, which I love the duality as well. You could sit on them in the park and, and that kind of thing. But um, you mentioned that they were slightly. Um, they were layered in mesh instead of plastic. Yeah. Which obviously is a much more fragile situation yeah. <laughs> than the plastic. And almost instead of um, dispelling and protecting the fabric, will increase the visibility of wear and age and yeah. journey yeah. that the product goes on so it actually does the exact opposite of the plastic, of the plastic last season. Korea was saying she liked the plastic because it preserved, it was kind of preserved, yeah. taking a snapshot of a memory or a moment and I feel like with the um, sheer covering it's showing the fragility yeah, for and sure. showing um, you know, metaphorically we're all in a rather fragile sticky place right yes. now. <laughs> um, so 
So yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I think the pattern cutting, the colour choices, the mustard yellow and the purple together was just brilliant. Um, and I thought the whole performative element was really good. It was a great space for her to have, actually. I really yeah. like the power station. Um, so, so yes, Gushy's, Gushy review once more. Absolutely <laughs> loved Priya. That was brilliant. Um, I'm so, so, so excited to see where she goes next. And I say that every time I do a Priya review, but um, because she's not got many seasons behind her, it's so, so exciting to see... The leaps and bounds. The she's leaps on. and bounds she's going on. Absolutely. So, Priya, if you're watching, very much looking forward to see what you do next. No pressure. Um, <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you very soon. Um, make sure subscribed and please do visit show studio so you can see and um, Priya's amazing Iranian print and all the rest of her collection see you guys soon